The opinions and recommendations expressed by Dan are his own and do not necessarily represent the opinions of this station or any of the show's sponsors. 866-300-9298, 866-300-9298. We got one line open. We are going to get to the phones. Uh, Right now, the Dow is off its highs. It's uh, up about 80.07. I'm sorry. I thought it was uh, 57. So it's right about where it was. Anyway, uh, everything in positive territory. Uh, Oil, uh, well above, well above uh, 100 hours, or at least it was. Let me just check and see if it's moved off of that. Also, speaking of oil, as I think about uh, oil, by the way, is 103. Yeah, 103.54. 103.54. That's not necessarily good news. Uh, gas up again last week. Gold up um, about 650. It's at 1325. Silver's at 1998. All the agricultural commodities in positive territory. I read a report out of the uh, Department of Agriculture saying that cattle prices, cattle up again. Cattle uh, looks like it's going to continue to be up for the neck for several years. Uh, is what they said, uh, blaming it on the export market that more and more beef getting exported. So um, we have that to look forward to. Speaking of commodities, I want to mention. I wanted to mention this, and I forgot. Look, there are uh, there's a commodity ETF on my website that is an uh, a, a now an agricultural commodity. If you are a partner with me, you have seen that. Uh, I wouldn't put, that would not be the first place that I would put money into if I was putting money into the market. So if you are maintaining, if you follow me, if you're a partner with me on the website at financialissues.org, then you know I have been making a strong case for having at least 50% in income. If you're one of those people that have had 50, 60% in income, this market downtick on the week last week didn't mean a whole lot to you. Right? So you saved yourself, you know, 3% on the downside, maybe more. That's a good thing. So with a significant portion of your portfolio. But if you are trying to get that 40 to 50% in the market, I would suggest well-diversified things, but I would also think about commodities. Here's, Here's the thing. I believe commodities are going to be with us for the next three, for the next three to five years. I think in the next three to five years, commodities are going to do very well. They've had a very good year this year, up about 2.5%, or at least the commodities I have on my website, up about 25 3%. Uh, today, likely, maybe closer to 3%. So I think they're going to continue to do pretty well. They're going to, Listen, they're commodities. They're speculative. Are they going to be volatile? Yes. I'm not, I'm not making a case that you should have uh, 30 40% in commodities. Not at all. I'm going to take the same position with my agricultural commodities that I would with gold, 10, 15%. But something to think about. And so if you're a partner with me on the website and you've seen that on there for the last uh, several weeks, it's been there for the last, and I, and again, this morning is why I thought about it in my review of it yesterday and my changing my buy list uh, today, which I didn't make any changes uh, today. And, but I did put a note on there to make sure you check back throughout the week. I think commodities are something that we've got to consider as a part of our portfolio for the long term. For the long term. You've heard me say over and over again, everybody needs to have some energy for the long term. I think commodities are right in there with it. And uh, I particularly like the commodity uh, that I have on my website. It covers the agricultural commodities. It does have a little gas and it does have a little oil in it. Uh, <clears throat> even has a little precious metals, not much, but it's primarily agricultural commodities. And I think we ought to be thinking about that as we move forward. Let me go back to the phones and go to Steve. Steve Conus from Texas. Hi, Steve. Yeah. Good morning, Dan. Good morning. Uh, just bless you and your ministry for what you do for us poor common folks. Well, <laughs> thank uh, you, Steve. My, my- I recently retired and I applied for Social Security and then somebody told me something. They said, don't take your so I'm 68. Okay. They said, don't take your Social Security to your 70. Mm-hmm. Because if you have anything in an IRA and you draw it out, that you get taxed in almost the highest income tax bracket against Social Security that... I've heard anywhere from 56 to 84 percent of whatever you draw out of your uh, IRA is taxed. 
extremely mm-hmm. heavy mm-hmm. that they seem to be out to punish the older people that have worked hard and saved and invested. Mm. Amen to that. And I wanted to get your feel on that, if it's wise to just go ahead and start pulling that, some of that money out of there and uh, live on that and let the Social Security grow that 16% for two years. I would. I think it is wise. I said it uh, often on the program. I use myself as an example. I'm not taking Social Security till I'm 70 unless there's some sort of an emergency that I have to um, because I get a 34% increase uh, per month uh, from that. And it is going to lower your tax base in the sense that you, what you don't want to do is draw so much out of your, uh, I'm sorry, out of your IRA accounts where it is even so much that it could make your Social Security taxable. Um, right now, you're in a place where for the next couple of years, you don't have to worry about that. You can draw out what yes, you but in want. in two years, I will have to worry you, about you that. You will. So take as yes, much as you... It, it, I'll be at that point where I have, I am forced to take it out of uh, IRA. Yes. And there's a big pocket there. And it's easy to go above that minimum of 44000 It sure is. But here's the thing... Uh, Steve, I would say to you, my my position always is when I do town hall meetings, when I talk here on the program, that I think everybody ought to have a strategy by which they're drawing money out of their IRA account. Now, I forget waiting to your 70 and a half. Now, I don't you don't have to use it doesn't mean you have to spend it. Maybe you don't need the income. That's fine. Then I tell people, pull it out, put it over into your savings account or over into your investment account on the on the other side. In other words, Anything in an IRA, an old 401k or whatever is considered qualified money. Anything in an investment account, you can have the same investments or whatever, is not non-qualified. So my, my goal, I think everybody's goal ought to be, is to get money from qualified to non-qualified. And you ought to be working on that uh, every single year. So whether you need it or not, better for you, better for your estate. To be paying the taxes uh, every year, a little bit at a time, or maybe not so little bit, but every year on that qualified money, pull it out of there, put it over into your savings if you don't need it, or if you have another investment account over there. So I think you should be doing that for the next 10, uh, two years, three years, and continue to do it. Obviously, you have to at 70 and a half, but- I would wait and take Social Security so that at least you get that break now that you can take a little bit more to move over to your investment account. Yes, you got to pay tax on it. Still better to do it because I think we're in the highest, lowest tax bracket we're ever going to be in. It's only going to go up. They don't care about seniors. They don't care anything about seniors. You're the ones with all the money. So they, they, they have no choice but to tax IRA money or fee it differently in order to raise revenue because there are literally trillions with a T dollars in 401ks, IRAs, because we baby boomers supposedly have all the money and all the wealth in the country. So I would start right now, Steve, I would take some out. If you can hold off your social security to your 70, I think that would be a, a, a great idea. Now, would it be wise to continue holding off after 70 for the purpose of drawing that money out so it's not taxed to that extreme? You can't hold off. You mean Social Security? You you mean, yeah, no, no, you have to start taking Social Security at 70. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, you're going to get it. And, And even if you didn't, I would take it because... Uh, there's absolutely no benefit. If you if you look at drawing at 70, paying the tax on it, you know, f- you know, uh, incurring the additional tax, you're still going to be f- better off at the end of the year. You will have more money than you did at the beginning of the year, even though you if you did, if it does increase your taxes, you're still going to be better off drawing it out. So at 70 and a half, definitely start taking your Social Security. Right. Well, bless you and your ministry, Dan. Your real encouragement to us. Well, thank you for that, Steve. I, I appreciate it. And, uh, you know, I hope I can uh, continue to be here for, 
for uh, all of you, because especially when I'm talking to seniors, you know, this drives me crazy that this government is so anti-senior citizen. I saw a an article yes uh, this morning, and there was a there was a photograph of a senior citizen holding up a sign that said uh, "Seniors for Obama." And the very first thing I thought of is, I hope she never gets sick. That was the first thing I thought of, because she's not going to be liking Obama too well, or at least her caregivers won't, when she's sick and can't get anything done. So that's a number one. Secondly, wouldn't it be nice to be getting four and a half to four and a quarter percent on your CDs? Wouldn't that be nice? That is a very intentional move by Alan Greenspan that's continued to this day. Wouldn't it be nice if seniors didn't have to put money into a risky stock market at the risk of losing their life savings because they were getting some sort of return on their CDs and wouldn't have to take the risk of losing half their life savings? Wouldn't that be nice? I th- this is such an anti, we live in such an anti-senior environment that it just drives me crazy. 866-300-9298. Let me go to Jim. Jim calling us from Texas. Hey, Jim. Hey, Jim. Um, I'm Dan. Sorry. Um, I've got two real quick questions. One, okay. when you talk about being in cash, are you talking about being in money market accounts? Yes, sir, I am. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So when um, you talk... Is there any... I, go ahead. Huh? Go well, ahead. I'm looking at another job, so mm-hmm. I'm going to roll my... 401k money over into wherever I go to work, but I also want to take it, either some of it out and put it in um, to another uh, IRA of some sort, either a Roth or, or just a usual one. And I was wondering if there's a money market fund that you recommend in particular. And also, and I'm going to hang up pretty soon and just listen to you. Mm -hmm. Is there a way to roll a 401k into a charitable gift annuity? And is there also a way, and I'm sure there is on this, to uh, roll it over into that commodity fund that you're talking about? Yeah, great questions. Thank you very much. You're welcome, Jim. Thank you for your call. Great questions. So here's the thing. Um, so yes, it's cash, it's money market account. Can you roll it over? You can roll a portion of it into a bank money market account to preserve it. You can roll a portion of it into an IRA in which you control. So let's say you went to a, t- a TD Ameritrade or one of those uh, online brokers and you rolled it over into a discount brokerage IRA. Then you can put that money within your IRA into this commodity fund I was talking about and into some oil companies, into some gas companies. So you can do whatever you want with it once you get it into a brokerage account. Can you roll it over in a charitable gift annuity? No. It has been before, it has been on the floor of Congress three times that I know of in the last 10 years and it has never passed to uh, allow that because that would have an enormous impact if you could. In for for not only God's work in ministry, but it would have enormous impact for nonprofits around the for the you know Red Cross or whatever else uh, uh, people might su- support. So it'd have an enormous impact for them if you could do it. But unfortunately, um, that that has not passed. And I think right now, and I'm talking about Republicans and Democrats alike, we have a pretty much an anti uh, an anti um, um, charitable deduction kind of Congress right now. So the odds of that happening in the future are slim to none. But yes, roll some of it over into a money market account, preserve it into a bank. Is there a money market account I recommend? No. I would say the two strongest mutual fund money market accounts are Vanguard and Fidelity. Uh, They've never put any money to shore up their money market account. They've never had to do that. Um, They would be the strongest. But they're not FDIC. Remember, a mutual fund money market is not FDIC insured, but it still should be uh, very, very safe. So, you know, I would look for, uh, so you might have to open up an IRA account, two IRA accounts, one at the bank. You can roll over a piece of your uh, IRA for cash, your 401k, and one at a brokerage. So you can roll it over there 
in another piece over there so that you can buy some individual stocks and such like that I have on my um, website in these commodities and other things. So that's how that would work. And the rest of it you put into your new 401k at a, at a new job. 866-300-9298. Uh, we've got two lines open if you want to queue your call up and we'll get back to it. You're listening to Dan Celia, Financial Issues. We're trying to help you be the best steward you can be with all that God has given you. Talk about the economy and a little bit of politics.